Welcome to another Mr. James Accounting tutorial. This time we are looking at Accounting Unit 2, 2019, Module 3, Paper 2. We will look at Course Volume Profit Analysis, Capital Budgeting, and Standard Cost. We have here some data. Some of it is budgeted. And some of it is the actual cost. And we are asked to calculate the following break even in units, margin of safety, the number of units that must be sold if the company wants to make a total profit of 4,306,500 for the quarter. Okay, so let's take a look at the data. Some of it is budgeted as we saw. And some of it is actual cost. Now the for the break even margin of safety and the target profit here, we will use the budgeted data only. And uh, the actual data would be used for the other parts of the question, the, the variance analysis. First the break even in units. Now as we go through the calculations, you may want to pause the video and uh, Go back and look at the data, okay? So you can get an idea of where these figures are coming from. Contribution per unit must be calculated first before you can calculate the break even point because the formula is fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. And uh, uh, to get the contribution per unit, the selling price minus the variable cost per unit is the formula so in this question the selling price is 2300 23000 sorry and the uh, variable cost per unit is the raw material plus the labor plus the overhead per unit and um, when we take that from the selling price we will get 13,050 per unit the break-even point then becomes fixed cost over contribution per unit. 5,128,650 is the budgeted fixed cost. And we must make sure we get the budgeted fixed cost here, not the actual, divided by 13,050 equal 393 units. Okay, next we have the margin of safety. And... Uh, this is the budgeted production, 650 minus the break-even point that we just calculated, and it's 200, because that's 257 units. Now, this is in units. If you want to get it in sales, you just multiply the 257 by the selling price, and we will get the margin of safety in sales. Right? We have to be careful here that we take the budgeted production and not the actual production. Part uh, 3, the target profit of 4,306,500. Okay, to get that target profit, we use a, a modified version of the break-even formula. We just add on the target profit to the fixed cost and we divide it by the CPU. So in this case, it's going to give us 5,128,650 and the 4,306,500. And then divided by the contribution per unit, and we will get 723 units we need to sell in order to make this amount of profit. Okay, so any target that you want to set, you just take it and add it on to the fixed cost, and you divide it by the contribution per unit, and you will get the target. Part B. Calculate the following variances, direct material price, direct material quantity, direct labor rate, and direct labor efficiency. So when we're looking at material, it has price and quantity. When we're looking at labor rate, labor we have rate and efficiency, but it's really the same thing. The, the labor rate is a price, and the labor efficiency has to do with quantity of labor. So all of these are uh, big. Basically, the same um, sub variances. Okay, so um, we will get right into the calculations. 
but these calculations would deal with the actual as well as the budgeted figures because to get a variance you have to take the actual and minus the budgeted figure or the standard figure and then you will get your variance to calculate the variances i'll be using these standard abbreviations aq would be the actual quantity of materials sq is the standard quantity of materials sp is standard price and ap is actual price and uh, for the labor ah is actual hours sh is standard hours and sr is standard rate ar is actual rate okay at this point you may want to go and look back at the uh, data for the standard and the actual figures in your past paper because i would not be flipping back to it in the video now in order to calculate these sub variances you have to know the formula using the abbreviations that i just gave you there for the direct material price variance you need to know this formula here the actual quantity multiplied by the actual price minus the actual quantity multiplied by the standard price okay if you notice aq and aq is common to both of them so you can take that out and they will wind up with ap minus sp okay and uh, you can work it out and you will get 47,000 favorable for the direct material price variance. Now, if you didn't know this formula before, I would suggest that you learn them before you go into your exam. Learn it by heart because they may not give you this. I haven't seen them giving this out to students in an exam. So you have to find some way of remembering it at first. And I would suggest that you memorize them. You don't look to see if you can remember it or logical, logically find it out during the exam itself. Part 2. The direct material quantity variance. The formula for this one would be actual quantity multiplied by standard price minus standard quantity multiplied by actual price. This time we're dealing with the quantity, so you have the quantity being common to the sorry, the price would be common to both of them, right? And you'll wind up with the actual quantity minus the standard quantity inside of one of the brackets. So when you work out this you're going to get a favorable variance of 862,500. Now, how would we know that it's favorable? When we look at the actual and the standard, the actual is less. Okay? So, we know that it's favorable. Three, the direct labor rate variance. The formula is actual hours multiplied by standard rate minus actual hours multiplied by actual rate. And again, we can pick out the common ones, actual hours, and we can put it outside the bracket. And inside the bracket, we'll have standard rate minus actual rate. And work it out again. Uh, we will get 855,000 for our variance, but this time it's unfavorable or adverse. We can have an E here for adverse as well. And um, the reason for that is because this, this time the standard is smaller than the actual. For direct labor efficiency variance, the formula for that is standard hours multiplied by standard rate minus actual hours multiplied by standard rate. And again, 
the style both of them are equal right so it has to do with the um, sorry they are not equal uh, that's 13,000 to 9,000 so we get um, the standard is greater than the actual so you get a favorable again and 4,000 400,000 favorable Part C, explain each of the following items an ideal standard and practical standard and this has to do with the standard course and it deals with each types of standard okay now the idea behind these short small kind of uh, questions is that you should answer them and you could answer them in point form but don't make your points too short and always remember that a point explains itself because you will not be there to explain it for the examiner okay ideal standard costing set standards only attainable under the best circumstances or most favorable conditions it assumes nothing can that can go wrong will occur okay practical standards are tight and attainable but attainable even under adverse conditions it assumes that situations can occur which will make the attainment of the standard difficult but takes this into consideration when setting the standard okay. all right so um these type of questions you have to look at the uh, meaning of the especially the meaning of the word here gives you a clue as to what it is and um, here ideal means the perfect standard and, and it is could that could only be attainable under perfect circumstances you have no shutdowns and stuff like that and no strikes and it uh, your labor uh, you get the best prices attainable from your suppliers and all of that okay practical standards are tight but attainable right those are the key words that you need in answering these here okay, part d i think this is the one that most students are waiting for it uh, deals with capital expenditure appraisal let's look at what is required first distinguish among the three given methods of evaluating investment decision so the three methods that we could see there are payback period npv and irr internal rate of return and net present value for those abbreviations next calculate the payback period for project e and this here we notice it is blank the one has calculated project b is given 6.9 years and three calculate the npv for project project b so you want the npv for this project here and four suggest using the npv criteria which project should be recommended to unique design given one reason okay now although it looks formidable formidable this is quite simple okay most of the calculations are already given to us and we are given the present value interest factor in the total so we don't have to go and add them up and uh, multiply them out at all we can just take this and, and multiply it by the annual cash inflow which is the same for each one of the 10 years here and each one of the 15 years here so instead of multiplying out each one you can just add up you add it up and then multiply the total and the total is given to you here okay so it's a simple up here and let's get right into it
the payback period first. It is a method of investment appraisal which calculates how long the investment takes to recoup its initial cost or how long it takes to pay for itself. Okay, so that is what the payback period is. The net present value is also an investment appraisal method, but it calculates the net present value of the discounted future cash flows of the investment. Notice it's future cash flows, right? We are looking at their value in the present. If the NPV is positive, the project may be accepted. If it is negative, then it will be rejected. The internal rate of return is also an investment appraisal method, but it calculates the discounting rate at which the net present value is equal to the, the zero. It is compared with the cost of capital to appraise the project. Right? The cost of capital is normally the borrowing rate or the rate at which they discount the future cash flows. So um, one of those two, and you're going to compare it with the rate that they calculate here. The discounting rate at which NPV equals zero and appraise your project that way. That's the internal rate of return, IRR. Now, part two required the payback period of project A. At this stage, you may want to pause the video and go back and look at the data. You will notice this is the initial cost divided by the annual return. All right, this is in fact an annuity and divided by 115,000 7.4 years. Three, NPV of project B, that will be 621, the initial cost, 1,000, minus, you take the, the total of all the uh, present value and you multiply it by the annual returns and you will get a negative figure when you minus this from that. Okay, 17,091. Four, project A is recommended because it's a positive NPV. We can see here project B has a negative NPV, it's in bracket. So you wouldn't want to consider this and um, you would accept project E instead.